fellow sadza eaters, slay queens and bingers, socialites, papa lights, varkujga rice, never cinema rice. Welcome to the special report. Today I want to show you how certain elements and events in the Zambian government are a glimpse of the very dark future ahead for ZANU PF. I want to clearly point out beyond any reasonable doubt the hypocrisy of Edgar Lungu's party, the Patriotic Front, which was formed by Michael Sata in 2001, assuming power in 2011 and ruling for 10 years before losing to the UPND of Haka Inde Hichilema in 2021. The purpose of this video video is to show you with current and historical evidence the dark future ahead for ZANU PF and as I said I'll be using the Zambian situation to prove this and as a disclaimer I want to make it very clear that this video is not meant to condone any violations harassment vengeance retaliation or retribution by the Zambian government against the opposition what is wrong is wrong what is unlawful is unlawful but really, it's the hypocrisy for me by the patriotic front. Remember that in Zambia, the main opposition is the patriotic front. This is the party that was defeated by Haka Inde Ichilema in 2021. Its leader was and still is Edgar Lungu. This is the man who started the politicization of the church in Southern Africa, way before Emerson Nangagwa did it. Remember, before pastors for ED, there was a creature called Christians for Lungu. I mean, ED literally copied Lungu's strategy and perfected it. When the student becomes the master. I mean, take a look at this photo. Look at the bromance. Wow. It's giving Mussolini and Hitler. When Lungu was still in power, his party actually said he's equal to Jesus in terms of humility. Not to be outdone, E.D. also blasphemed God when he said even heaven doesn't have a party as beautiful as ZANU PF. Edgar Lungu's party caused untold suffering against the opposition and all dissenting voices. But all of a sudden, the former president of Zambia is now a champion of human rights and the rule of law? Lungu's party brands Akainde Ichilema a dictator for applying some of the laws that they themselves passed when they were still in power. We see them in the streets of Lusaka, in Kabwe, in Kitwe, in Ndola, crying about human rights violations. The very same rights that they gladly, callously and brazenly violated left, right and center barely three years ago when they were still in power. They forget that they are the ones who set up the system that is currently eating them today. It takes more than just one presidential term to fully reform a whole system of government in its entirety. And again, I reiterate, and this must be emphasized, that yes, President Hakainde Ichilema must be held 100% accountable for everything that happens in his government. After all, the buck stops with him as president. But it is very clear to me that there are elements in his government who are still hell-bent on settling some old scores. This is very retrogressive. It's making Hakainde Hichilema look bad. It erodes all the goodwill he has enjoyed since assuming office in 2021. But of course, the point I am making is that it's very rich for Lungu to brand Hakainde Hichilema a dictator given Lungu's track record on human rights. Lungu has no moral high ground from which to school anyone about the rule of law. When his party, the Patriotic Front, came to power in 2001 with uh, Michael Sata as president, there was so much promise, so much hope and goodwill, but three years into Sata's presidency, his administration was tarnished by a crackdown on the opposition, ZANU-PF style. He even became best friends with the godfather of modern political crackdowns in Africa, Robert Mugabe. When Edgar Lungu took over after the death of Sata, things got worse for the Zambian opposition. At one point, they violently arrested Ichilema and charged him with treason. During the arrest, Zambian police used excessive force to enter his residence, damaging his property in the process. They tortured his staff and fired tear gas into his house, gassing his asthmatic wife and innocent children. 
This illegal arrest and subsequent detention sparked local and international outrage and protests in Hichilema's defense as people from all walks of life called for his immediate and unconditional release. On the 9th of March 2020, Zambian police arrested a 15-year-old boy in Kapirimposhi. Guess what? They actually charged this 15-year-old boy with three counts of criminal libel after he allegedly criticized the then president of Zambia, Edgar Lungu, the one who is complaining about human rights abuses. Today, it gets worse. In 2019, another opposition leader, Sean Tembo, was arrested on a charge of defamation for questioning the purchase of a $400 million presidential jet amid a national debt crisis which everyone knows about even today. In April 2020, the Zambian government revoked the broadcasting license of Zambia's leading private television network, Prime TV. No specific reason was given for that move. But the Independent Broadcasting Authority stated that the action had been taken in the public interest. Doesn't this word public interest or national interest ring a bell? Especially if you are a Zimbabwean? Particularly if you are familiar with the Patriot Act. There was no rule of law in Zambia under Edgar Lungu. And in fact, just before the 2021 Zambian general election, which Yichilema would later win with a landslide, Amnesty International said the following, quote-unquote, What we have seen in Zambia, especially in the past five years, is an increasingly brutal crackdown on human rights, characterized by brazen attacks on any form of dissent. Opposition leaders, journalists, media houses and activists have all been targeted and speaking out against allegations of government corruption or abuse has become more dangerous. Protests have been stopped or dispersed with unlawful and sometimes lethal force and people who speak up against allegations of corruption have been intimidated and harassed. This is a report from Amnesty International just before the Zambian general election in 2021. Yet Edgar Lungo's party today is crying about the abuse of human rights, the very human rights that they didn't care about barely three years ago. You know, there is a Zimbabwean proverb which goes like, Dindingwerno fara kanarichi kweva rimwe, asikana irore kwevewa, rozot mavarangu azarevu. What that simply means by interpretation is, do unto others what you expect them to do unto you. And again, I'm not sanitizing any violations by the current Zambian government. Two wrongs don't make a right. What is wrong is wrong. What is unlawful remains unlawful. For example, recently, Emmanuel Mambo from the opposition was detained for calling for anti-government demonstrations on Facebook. This is wrong. We condemn this. Thank God he was later released. And we also thank God that he wasn't tortured, just like what would have happened had this been Lungu in power. Another member from the main opposition, Rafael Nakachinda, has been charged with espionage, which is basically spying against your government, along with uh, Fred Membe from the Socialist Party after they featured on a documentary that was televised by the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation when Nevis Mumba read the Sadiq Observer mission report, which shook ZANU-PF to the core. Not only that, a radio caller from Kabwe was arrested for complaining to a senior government official live on radio. This caller complained about the ruling party's failure to fulfill its campaign promises. And this senior government official got angry and got this caller arrested. This caller was later released, of course. But all of this is wrong and no true democrat will ever condone this. This is wrong, period. Even the Law Society of Zambia issued a statement condemning all these unfortunate developments. But one fundamental point to note is that these violations are being done by individuals in Hichilema's administration. It's not government policy at all, because if it was, then all these people being arrested would be languishing in prison just like what is happening to Job Scala. Job Wiwaskala has been in prison for over a year because in Zimbabwe, detaining political opponents indefinitely is part of government's policy of dealing with the opposition decisively. But in Zambia, that is not the case at all. 
it's very clear to me that Hichilema's government has some elements in it who are still hell-bent on settling some old scores. Revenge, retaliation, retribution. You can take the Israelites out of Egypt, but you can't take Egypt out of certain Israelites. The Zambian version of Korah and Datan. But this is exactly what will happen to Zanu PF when it loses power. Zanu PF is digging a hole so deep that when it finally falls, it's going to hurt so bad. Right now, they seem invincible, firmly in charge. Court and court, we are the army, we are the police, we are the intelligence, we are the prison service. We determine who can mine gold, who can farm, who can do tourism, who can eat, who can drink, who can run, who can sleep, who can go to the toilet, who can die. But they are digging a hole so big that their fall is going to be so epic. All these laws that they are crafting against the opposition will be used against them when they leave office. Mark my words. Just now, Hakainda Ichilema is struggling to whip into line and transform the mindset of all members of his party and government as a whole. Remember, I told you that it will take more than just one presidential term to democratize all state institutions and the entire government as a system. Remember, in Africa, we don't have strong institutions. We have strong men. Our institutions are built to serve strong men. Hakainda Ishilema is a good guy. The task is just too big. If he was out to get revenge, then Edgar Lungu would be behind bars. I have no doubt about that. But I fear that the same thing will happen to Nelson Chamisa. He's going to have a hard time restraining Triple C members from revenging and retaliating when he becomes president. Just take a look at the toxicity and polarity that currently exists under ZANU PF. People are very angry, and the only thing that's keeping them calm is Idris military. Imagine what will happen when Chamisa is fully in charge and ZANU PF is in the opposition. Imagine what may happen if Job Scala becomes, say, maybe Minister of the Police, Home Affairs. With all that anger and bitterness, all the wounds and scars on his body at the hand of Zanu PF. You think that Job Scala is not going to be tempted to revenge? It's not just Job Scala, by the way. The entire Triple C leadership has one way or the other been either arrested or abducted, beaten and tortured by Zanu PF. It will take some level of maturity and forgiveness for them to get past all this and not revenge. Again, I say, Zanu PF is digging its own grave. Some of these evil laws will be used against it and you will see them crying about human rights, the same human rights that they don't care about today. Perhaps I need to remind them of the Indemnity Act of 1975 passed by the Smith regime. You see, this law absolved government officials and their aides from criminal proceedings for any act whatsoever carried out in good faith for the purpose of the suppression of terrorism. So in simple terms, this law was a license to kill. Government officials were in effect given the authority to kill any black person they suspected of being a terrorist. Now given how racist some of these Rhodesians were, you can imagine how many innocent black people died because of this crazy piece of legislation. Now the implication of this was, if a white government official didn't like you, they could just kill you and tell the judge that you were a terrorist and that would be the end of it. How sad. But as fate would have it, in 1980, the Secretary General of ZANU, Edgar Tekere, killed a white farmer but escaped a prison sentence because of this crazy law, the Indemnity Act. Tekere told the court that he killed this white farmer in good faith as he had at the time good reason to believe that the said farmer would commit acts of terrorism. And that's how Edgar Tekere escaped. He got away with murder. Uh, the very law that the Rhodesians crafted against black freedom fighters, who they called uh, terrorists, ended up consuming one of their own, a white farmer. And the perpetrator, Tekere, walked away scot-free. 
Indeed, revenge is a B word. This is just a reminder of how things you do today can either affect yourself or those close to you in the future. Remember, Robert Mugabe was all about reconciliation after independence, but still, he had some hot heads in his government, some overzealous comrades like Tekere, who caused problems for Robert Mugabe. I put it to everyone watching this video that history will indeed repeat itself under a Nelson Chamisa presidency. There are triple C comrades and supporters who will take it upon themselves to revenge, and ZANU PF will not like it. They will cry, just like what Edgar Lungu and his party are doing today. ZANU-PF is setting itself up for disaster. It will end in tears. That ZANU-PF will lose power is inevitable. It's just a question of when. They can delay it all they like, but it will happen. This is guaranteed. And when it eventually happens, they will finally get a taste of their own very bitter medicine. TikTok, 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 TikTok. Thy end is nigh. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please like and share.